How you two? Long time no see. All right. Today is June 16th, Thursday. And um, you're gonna be seeing this on June 17th, Friday. <sighs> this is a little, I'm very, very, I feel very ill right now. Not like sick coughing, but like sick stomach. So I decided, you know what? Let me just half-ass this right here and show you my, my setup right now. I have two white screens. I have three things of toilet paper on top of two contacts and this. I am not prepared for this, but I think that shows you uh, how genuine this is. I'm really not trying because I want this to come out of heart. I don't want to have a script for any of this. Um, ooh. Okay. I'm doing this new thing called Let's Talk, right? Monthly check ins on YouTube where we talk about stuff. What's going on in the past month? What we're doing, everything, all that. You guys can drop comments and shit. But today, as the first video, I want to talk about mental health. And if you are in my any of my spams or any of that, you know that I've been waiting to do this video for a while. Um, because I had my problems with mental health, right? You guys know that. Winter of 2021. 2020 I had my problems you know you guys know all that and I wanted to make I want this to make my fan base or people watching I want you guys to feel comfortable enough to where you can talk to people tell yourself tell yourself tell other people how you're feeling because that's what I needed to do that's what I did when I had my little mental health problems if I was depressed if I wasn't whatever it was, whatever you want to call it. What I needed to do most was talk to someone. And the main reason why I got into that state of mind was because I didn't really have anyone to talk to. And you guys were like, oh, but you had a girlfriend at the time. Oh, you had great friends, you had your family. It's not, it's very different. Um, yeah, I talk to these people all the time, I tell them stuff, but when you're fighting with something personal and something you can't even get an answer to yourself, you don't see use into doing that. So let's flash back. Let's go back to 2020. I started off the summer of 2020. Um, I realized this was gonna be my last summer as a teenager, a kid. I was 17 at the time. And it hit me really hard. It, it hit me really hard. Um, I was 17, yeah, I was 17, but, you know, just to know that, oh, next summer I'm going to be 18, next summer I'm going to be an adult, and stuff like that. This is not my last summer with my friends where I can do whatever I want. And after that, after the summer's done, I'm, I have to prepare for adulthood, right? And I had so much pressure on me. I put so much pressure on myself to the point where panic attacks would start at night around, I'm like, what am I? Do what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna still do what I'm doing? Am I gonna find something to do? Am I gonna go to school? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do that? How am I gonna do it with my friends, with my girlfriend at the time? What am I gonna do, right? Eating me away every single night, every single night since the and since the summer of 2020. And um, it kept on going and got worse until I saw myself as like a burden in people's lives and. Um, I was like, <sighs> sorry. Um, it came to a point where I felt like I was being a burden to a lot of people, um, feeling like I didn't provide anything for anyone, and. I was disappointing myself. I was disappointing. I felt like I was disappointing my parents. I was disappointing my friends. And I was disappointing you guys. Um, and I kept on. I kept on going and going for months um, until November. What was it like? August started. August September. Three months after 
um, it was just eating me away and I, I got really anxious and stuff and I was panicking to myself and I was like, three months every single night, I was like, what am I gonna do, 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 I was just, I felt like I was weighing my friends down, I was weighing the people around me down and it just, it just kept on getting worse and worse and worse to the point where I was like, I don't have like, reason, you know? I don't think anyone's gonna benefit with me here. Oh. Holy fuck. I'm not cutting anything out, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting this edited, so all these pauses are gonna be in the video tomorrow. I don't feel like editing this, I want this to be as genuine as possible, so. I was like, do I do everyone a favor? Do I do everyone a favor and just like rid myself, you know? Like, what is actually gonna happen? What, who, what is it gonna affect? Like, I feel like I'm embarrassing myself. I feel like I'm just disappointing everyone around me. Disappointing my mom, disappointing my dad, disappointing my brother, disappointing my friends, disappointing my girlfriend at the time, disappointing, disappointing you guys. And it was, there was one night I remember, um, I was just driving with my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, can you, can you turn, can you, can you make this right turn? I was like, why? Because you know, Kyrie lives over here. I was like, I'll be right back. And if you ask Kyrie this, he'll say the same thing. I went to his room. I said hi to his mother. I just walked in because that's what we usually do for Ky Kyrie's house. I just walked in. And I just, I just gave him a hug, you know? I just broke down. Like, I had, I had enough. This was like... This was after whatever I tried, and I told him, like, I tried to do this. Kyrie is, Kyrie is the main reason why I'm, I, was, I didn't do what I did. I'm just opening up because I feel like this is a good time. I feel like opening up to you guys. Um, and yeah, I just want to just want you guys to know that Kyrie is a, a big help. But no, I just dealt with it for a couple months and I felt weak. I am I am a weak person when it comes to that stuff and I just broke down and I was like I told Kyrie, I was like this this is why I feel this way, this is why I tried what I did and it didn't work. Why? Because I was too weak. I was too weak to be too weak, is what was the main thing. And we talked it out. Um, I broke down in front of my parents. My parents found out how I was feeling. I suppressed it for a while, so they didn't even know. I was just in my room, you know, thinking whatever I was thinking. I didn't really show it to anyone else besides myself. Um, no one really had the idea of how I was feeling until I talked about it, but this is like, I feel like you guys have been a part of my life enough to deserve to know what I, what I was going through. And, um, it took me maybe a month, a couple of months to get out of this, this, uh, state of mind that I was in where I felt like I was nothing to nobody or I felt like I wasn't anything to everybody. It's a better uh, word choice. My dad contacted a therapist, mental coach, whatever you want to call it, and <laughs> taught me why the fuck did my screens go off? No, no. There, they're back. Um, taught me how to get out of this, whatever I was dealing with. Um, and it was mainly because of talk. I was talking to someone else. I was talking with someone, and I felt comfortable enough 
to talk to this person, not even my girlfriend at the time, not even my friends, one friend I talked to, not even my parents. Um, I don't know what made me talk to some, finally talk to someone about it, maybe because this person was of higher knowledge when it comes to this stuff, maybe because I've had enough, I don't know what it was, but all I know was talking was the best thing that I could have done. And I'm bringing this to light because of recent events and tragedies involving a friend. That's why I'm bringing this to light. Um, he was very open about how he felt with the things he was going on with, with, with what he was dealing with, and I feel like I could push that narrative out there. I have a somewhat of a following, right? I could push that narrative out there, make people feel more comfortable in speaking about what they went through and what they're going through. And knowing that, like, there's people out there who, no matter what you think, what you think, what I thought, when I thought that was a burden to everyone, that no one was, I wasn't of use to anyone, there's going to be people that think otherwise, 100%, 100 million, thousand percent, there's going to be people that think otherwise. And the best remedy, the best therapy is speech, is communication. And I just want you all to know that. It's a cliche, it's corny, you wanna say whatever, it's corny, it's it's a cliche, I've heard it all the time. There's always gonna be there, there's always someone that cares. You need to talk to somebody, right? Don't don't fucking hold it in here. Because if, because if you hold it in here, it's just gonna keep on going, 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 going until it fucking all explodes. I held it for three months, other people hold it for years, other people hold it for a week. I held it for three months, and it got out. And it got out. I had to I had to deal whatever I had to deal with for what three months. I couldn't have couldn't hold it anymore, and I it came out. My intrusive thoughts ate me up. I tried what I tried. I failed. Thank God I failed, and I had a breakdown in front of people that I love. And that's maybe what it takes. But after that, you talk to people. You talk to people that you think you love that you think love you. Because no, not everyone knows like, oh, does this person love me, this person not just talk to them, talk to them. It doesn't hurt to talk to anybody. You're, there's always someone, don't say that there's no one. Because what are the odds of that? Right, there's always gonna be someone, you're not entirely alone. And you're gonna say this is, a, again, corny and cliche, but I promise you, there's, you're, don't, you as, as alone as you feel, as much as you feel alone, I promise you there's at least one person that cares enough. Whether that be a parent, whether that be a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whether that be an aunt or uncle, a sibling, a friend. And if that's all off the fucking board, therapy. Anyone that has higher education, higher knowledge in what you're dealing with will care. It's just how it is. Some people aren't as lucky as other people. I mean, they don't have an opportunity to do this thing, these things, but if you do have the opportunity to do that, to talk, to speak to someone of higher knowledge, do it. If you don't, there's always someone else. People don't have that benefit. People do have that benefit. But either way, there's going to be people that care. And I told you guys my story my backstory, whatever you want to call it, my arc. Um, finally, I don't think a lot of people, you, a lot of you guys knew, a lot of people knew in general what I was dealing with. Um, but yeah, I was stupid to think that. I was stupid to try what I tried. I was stupid to fall into that pit because of what I thought, because it wasn't true. I don't know what was going on. I was, Fucking, there was so much other things that, that personal to me that I wouldn't even share to whoever I spoke to, but it was just a bunch of shit that just piled on and piled on and piled on and piled on and piled on until I couldn't fucking take it anymore. And, yeah. 
So I hope you guys appreciate me spewing my, telling you guys my story on my history with mental health, with a suicide attempt, with depression. And I want you to let, I want to let you guys know you're not alone. With the recent passing of Cooper, um, a friend of mine, he set up a Discord called Coop's Advice on Mental Health. And it's fucking beautiful. It's, it's, it's fucking amazing. It's amazing. I'm in the Discord. And it's just amazing that there's finally something bringing so many people into comfort. There's, what, 250,000? Last time I checked, 270,000 people in there. It's fucking amazing. It's, it's honestly, it's beautiful. It's an amazing act. And it's Cooper's legacy. If you do have Discord, I suggest joining it. You can see that it's made for mental health. It's made for people to open up. It's made for people to tell their story. And with all those thousands, hundreds, thousands of other people in there, will be your support. Say you didn't have anyone, all the people that I named. Go into the Discord and you'll see how many people actually give a fuck. You're gonna see how many people actually care. My battery's about to die. Fuck. Uh, but I will leave the description. I will leave the link to Cooper's Discord, Coop's advice in the description. Please join if you feel any, any way, any way, any way. Please, 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 please join. Please join. Please. It's a blessing to have this fucking Discord. It is. And Sorry, my piece of shit fucking battery died. Lucky I have another one. I get rid of this fucking camera. As I was saying, this Discord is a blessing. And it's also Cooper's legacy. Whether you knew Cooper, where you were, whether you were a supporter of Cooper, or whether you weren't, this Discord is meant to be support for any person that's dealing with anything. Anything harmful, anything mentally harmful, anything physically harmful, this Discord is for you. Like I said before, if you feel alone, and if any of those people that I named the previous were not at disposal, were not at first hand for you, clicks away. Clicks away is Cooper's Discord. With hundreds and thousands of thousands of people there for support. It's it's just it's 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 crazy how many how many people exceeded Cooper's expectations. How many people joined that ex that exceeded Cooper's expectations, and it's 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 a beautiful thing. It really is a beautiful thing. So, hopefully, what I shared with you guys made you guys comfortable enough with me and with yourselves to speak about what you're going through, what you're going through. And if you don't feel like dropping anything in the comments, whatever, go to Cooper's Discord, please, please. I would hate, hate, hate to see support not be used. I love you guys, each and every one of you, and I'm grateful to still be here because of you guys. I'm very grateful to you guys, so much. I look fucking hideous right now, my hair is a fucking mess. That fucking touch up whatever the fuck's on my top lip. Uh, but I am very grateful to you guys. And I, I pray no one has to go through what, what I went through. I wouldn't wish that, wish that on my fucking worst enemy. I really wouldn't. This is the worst feeling, honestly. It's the worst. But that was my first Let's Talk. My first of many monthly check-ins is as much as you guys don't want to believe me that I will actually fucking pull through with this because it's on this platform, YouTube, that I fucking suck at. As much as you guys don't believe me, I will. 
weekly videos on Friday. This is going up on Friday. Filming tomorrow on a Friday for next Friday. And monthly check-ins, let's talk. This is episode one, mental health, whatever. But I, if you're still watching, again, thank you. Thank you for sticking by my side for almost three years. And I just wanna say I love you guys a lot. And if you're ever dealing with anything, please, 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 please join the Discord in the description. Press the link in the description, please. Please. But, that's the end of my let's talk. Not a TED talk, a let's talk. And T is let's talk. That's the end of this video. I'll catch in. Catch up with you guys next month. And I'll see you guys next week. Love you guys so much. And stay safe.